sign up yet. Ah, yes, right, recording has started. <clears throat> okay, welcome everybody. Um, may I remind everybody present that the meeting will re be recorded via the internet and this recording archive for future viewing. Could all participants mute themselves when not speaking in order to avoid any background noise or feedback when other participants are speaking? If a com committee member wishes to speak, they can put their hand up if they can be seen or use the hand up facility in the application. If any participant has difficulty hearing or being heard, they should let the chairman or democratic services officer know as soon as is possible. If they have a webcam, they should try turning this off in order to help with their broadband or Wi-Fi bandwidth so at least they can be heard clearly. If required, participants can dial into the meeting using a telephone. The telephone number was provided in your invite. Uh, if for any technical reason, any person, part, uh, any person party to the proceedings is unable to hear, then the hearing will be adjourned for a short time to allow reconnection. Uh, it is important to remember that all parties must hear all of the debate on, on the particular items for them to be able to vote. Please ensure that all debate is raised verbally and not via the chat function for the sake of the recording. The chat function may be used to highlight any technical issues or grab the attention of the chairman or democratic services officers only. The allocated public speaking minutes uh, will be strictly adhered to, um, and that is the end of the official blurb. So, welcome, as I say, to planning committee. Um, item one is apologies for absence. I believe we do have some. Could I have apologies, Councillor Johnson? Uh, thank you, Chair. Councillor Nick Hodge is unable to attend. He is on Barrytown Council business today. Lovely, thank you very much. And Councillor Driscoll, I believe you have some. Yeah, Councillor might be to write and um, Councillor Gordon Kemp. I think Gordon might try and catch the meeting later on, but at the moment he's doubtful. Okay, thank you very much, Vince. Uh, no other apologies? Uh, just two further apologies um, from Councillor Gray, Chairman, and from Councillor Wilson and Birch. Okay, lovely, thank you. This is as um, fewer people we've had in planning committee for a long time. Right, so um, could you, uh, or are you all happy with the minutes that are attached to your agenda of the previous meeting? Can I sign them as a correct record? No dissenters, thank you very much, I will do that. Uh, to receive any declarations of interest, do we have any? Well, I'll kick proceedings off, I do. Uh, the final item on the planning agenda is um, 2020-01131 full, the stable St Andrews Road. Uh, I am uh, a direct neighbour, so I will leave the meeting um, and won't be chairing. So because of that, um, Ben is normally my vice chair. At the time, Amy will take charge of the meeting. And we will, um, or Amy will, uh, ask you to nominate a temporary chairman for that item. Um, so um, I think that uh, unless anybody else has a declaration, that leads us on to the business of the day. And as you have probably seen in your matters arising, the first two applications uh, have been requested to be deferred um, due to planning updates and the NDP um, that has just been um, launched, which we had a briefing on earlier. So if committee is happy, um, we will defer those until they're ready for them to come again. Are you all happy that we defer those? Aye. Vicky, did you want to say anything about them now or not? Not about those, Chair. I will um, refer to the other matters arising uh, note in a moment when, when you're ready. OK, lovely. Thank you. Right. So um, those... Move to deferral. Thank you. Do we have a second there? Yeah, Margaret has put a thumb up. So um, 
that will be done. So the next one on the agenda. Sorry, <coughs> Chairman, can I just just um, thank Mr. Harris, who was our registered speaker for one of those applications? Me, I'm very sorry. I meant to do that myself. Yes, Mr. Harris, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, we we can't we couldn't let you know earlier because we didn't know if committee would allow a deferral or not. Uh, it will mean you will have to re-register. Sorry, next time they come in. Um, I'm not sure. Amy, will you? be letting Mr Harris know when they're likely to come back to committee. Yes, I can do that, Chairman, no problem. That, that would be helpful. OK, thank you very much. So, um, sorry, Mr Harris, you're quite welcome to stay on and listen to what goes on. Um, but uh, unfortunately, um, we won't be hearing from you today. So um, the next item on the agenda is 2020-01108 full 70 Eastgate. Uh, I'll hand over to Vicky. There are matters arising on this, which I'm sure you will notice, but Vicky will explain. Thank you, Chair. Um, so before we uh, refer to that planning application, can I just draw members' attention to the matters arising note that covers all applications for consideration at this evening's meeting? Um, You'll be aware from the member briefing we've had this afternoon and from the matters arising that today Welsh Government published the new National Development Plan for Wales called Future Wales and um, it has the same development plan status as our own local development plan. Therefore, its contents, its policies are relevant to making decisions from today in the Red of Glamorgan. Um, so it's important that we take account of that document in making our decisions uh, this evening and hereafter. Because it's only been published today and only came into effect today, we weren't able to reflect its content in uh, the officer's report that have been uh, published uh, for your consideration today. We weren't even able to put in any detail in the Master Rising note because that was finalised yesterday. However, um, having reviewed the content of the National Development Plan, we uh, do not feel there are any specific policies or proposals, any content in that plan that materially affect the uh, reports set out to you uh, for this evening's planning applications and enforcement matters. Um, there are no implications for those in terms of the recommendation or your consideration of them. Um, obviously, the, the developments will come to one at a time, but um, they're, they're relatively small scale, uh, whereas the uh, National Development Plan looks at um, all Wales planning issues and regional strategic planning issues rather than the, the, the bespoke and, and smaller scale matters that we're considering at this evening's meetings. Similarly, uh, alongside the publication of the National Development Plan, there has been a new version of Planning Policy Wales published today, which is edition 11, which is what we will be referring to from now on in all our decision making, including this evening. Again, um, there are no implications from that new version of Edition 11 Planning Policy Wales um, that would change or alter materially the uh, content and recommendations set out in this evening's planning reports. Um, furthermore, TAN 8 has been revoked as of today because it's replaced by the content of those two new documents. TAN 8 is the Renewable Energy um, Technical Advice Notes and um, it's not particularly relevant to any of the matters that we're considering at this evening's meeting either. So um, if there are any matters as we're going through the debate this evening that you want any further guidance on that, please feel free to um, to ask and I'll do my very best to help you out. Thank you, Vicky. Um, one thing I forgot to mention before you start on, on this one is please could all members of Planning Committee keep the plans that they have been sent with their pack for the deferred applications. It costs us a lot of money to print these plans. And if you can hang on to them rather than chuck them in the bin, they will be coming back to us. Uh, I'm sure it will save us a lot of printing. So sorry, Vicky, I just had to get that one out before um, I forgot. <laughs> no problem, that's fine. Um, okay, I think I've covered everything that, that I wanted to say about the new uh, uh, planning policy framework. So the first application that we're considering um, that Chair introduced, I think, was 70 Eastgate. Yeah. Um, now, there is a matters arising, but it's not in the matters arising report because it came in after that was finalised. So I'm verbally advising you that the application has been withdrawn. Uh, the planning agent contacted us yesterday by email to let us know that they want to withdraw the planning application. Unlike the first two matters that we were, were therefore sort of seeking to defer and not consider, I would still like members to debate and consider the enforcement recommendation within that report. So um, 
if I can just introduce that matter and, and set out the reasons for that recommendation. Um, but just to advise, we're not considering the planning application because that's been withdrawn. We're only considering the enforcement matters within it. So I will just attempt to share the plans as I talk through um, the matter. Can you see those on your screen? Yes. Great. OK, so this is the, the site plan. Um, it relates to an existing restaurant um, in Cowbridge, in the sort of uh, retail area of Cowbridge. Some of you may be familiar with the restaurant. The um, the application which these plans relate to are, are what's on the screen at the moment. So I want you to largely ignore those as it's not the application, but it's what's been built on site that we're considering taking enforcement action against. Um, so. These photographs obviously show the building that's been built at the back of the site. This is taken from the neighbouring property and we have received objections from the neighbours because of the sort of visual harm and impact from, from the development, which um, as the officer's report sets out, we agree with that, um, that level of harm in terms of um, uh, the impact on the neighbouring amenity. The, the building as constructed has been, um, as you can see from these photographs, it's, it's a mixed construction of block work, some cladding, some timber. Um, this is, these are the internal photographs. Um, our building control officers have also been involved because, um, you know, at the moment it, it, it fails to comply with the building regulations, but obviously you're aware that's separate from the planning considerations. But um, you can see that the sort of materials that have been used and the, and the manner of construction um, really does uh, well look a mess to, to put it politely but um, or not politely as the case may be um, and and therefore we feel it is harmful to to the neighboring properties that that adjoin here this photograph was before um, the fence was erected a, a fence has now been erected but obviously doesn't screen the entire building and, and, and does little to sort of improve the visual outlook from from those neighbouring properties. So we feel what's been built is harmful. Um, I have to say that the, the purpose of the withdrawal for, of the application is that the applicant has indicated through his agent that they do want to find an acceptable solution here. Um, and, it, and, and we're not saying I'm just going to stop sharing because it's distracting me. Um, we're not saying that the uh, the idea of having a building at the back of this restaurant as a storage area or, or a kitchen is, is unacceptable in principle, but we feel that the materials used here and the way in which it's been constructed um, do cause visual and neighbouring um, harm to the neighbouring amenities that we don't think is acceptable. Therefore, we are, we're looking for your endorsement to take enforcement action. We're hopeful that that won't be necessary and that we can, um, in the intervening period, uh, discuss it with the applicant, come up with a solution that obviously complies with both building regs and our planning requirements to to, to build a, a more satisfactory uh, building out the back here to, to meet their needs. But we feel that there's harm caused by what's there and that it's important that we set down a marker in terms of the authorisation for enforcement action um, so that that will then assist us in our negotiations to secure a better and acceptable scheme here. Great. Thank you. OK, committee. So we're not looking at the planning application, but we are asking you to um, make a decision on the enforcement. Um, does anybody want any questions? Yes, Neil's got his hand up, I see. Neil Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks, uh, John. Um, just just a brief one. What's the different? What, what's the distance between that fence and the actual building? It, it looks very very narrow, and it looks as though they've had to trespass on the neighbouring property in order to erect it because it's built sort of the wrong way round. I believe it's the neighbour that's erected the fence. Um, I couldn't I couldn't you know categorically confirm that or whether or not any trespass has taken place, but that's my understanding of it. And it was part of that that caused us concern about the um, proposals for the planning application, which, you know, the planning application wasn't proposing to retain what's being built. It was proposing um, different materials and to, to smarten up what's been built there. But we were concerned that in doing so, they wouldn't be able to finish the block work in acceptable render because of its closeness to the neighbouring uh, property and the and the fence you know they're not going to be able to get in there to render it properly and things like that so it was one of our concerns but that's my understanding of it okay i, I thought it was the applicant's fence but if, if it's the neighbours and that explains it thank you 
Okay, uh, Stuart, so I see Stuart's got his hand up, followed by Michael Morgan. So Stuart first, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can I ask Vicky what sort of impact it would have on the continuation of the business if we were to take this enforcement, please? Um, well, I would expect it to have some level of disruption. They're obviously using the the outdoor building, as you saw from the photographs, for some incidental storage and food preparation, possibly area. Um, and I and I'm not sure how long they have been using that area or how their business operates. Um, but you know, obviously, there would have been some disruption when they went about constructing this building in the first place. We would give a reasonable level of time for compliance in order for them to plan properly um, uh, to be able to to do what they need to do. Like I say, I'm hopeful that they're going to come up with a solution for a replacement building that is acceptable in planning on planning grounds and, and that that obviously would minimise the amount of disruption to the business. OK, uh, uh, Michael, are you ready? Yeah, that's, that's, well, Victoria's just answered my question, actually. I was only going to inquire whether there would be an intention to defer the actual issue of proceedings to allow time to sort it out. And I understand that is the intention, not not to, to, to take immediate enforcement action, but to enter into dialogue. That's, yes. That's, yeah. 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 My, okay. I think, Michael, that that is pretty much the rule of thumb yeah. that uh, is operated. We're not we're not going home. We don't like chasing people for unnecessary reasons. But what it does do, it gives uh, our officers um, some scope that if the developers don't engage with us, um, they you know they have the option of taking it to legal proceedings. But uh, no, generally, hopefully. Uh, we will get a negotiation and a successful outcome without any proceeding. Um, so Thank you. I see I've got Stuart again and then uh, Neil Thomas again. So Stuart. No, not not Stuart. Uh, just not sure how to get rid of my hand on the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Um, just click it again. Click the hand again. Sorry, you, um, Neil Thomas. Then. Yeah, just uh, again, very briefly. Uh, how, how do we know if food hygiene people have had a look at the uh, this place? If there's food preparation and stuff going on there, it looks a bit. It does look a bit dodgy. And um, can I move minutes? Uh, I'll move recommendations while I'm on. Okay, thank you. Um, well, uh, actually, um, I, I I share your concerns, but really, it's not a planning issue. Um, I, I thank you for moving, and um, just to be clear, you are moving the enforcement action. Thank you. Um, just before we go further, Ian Johnson would like a, a word, and Vicky wants to come in as well. I was just going to second Council Thomas in um, in the enforcement action. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Vicky, you wanted to come in. Yeah, only to say just the, for the niceties, the administration of it. I think the reasons in the rec in the report for the recommendation probably refer to the old version of Planning Policy Wales and, and obviously won't reference the new National Development Plan. And um, can I just confirm that members are happy for me to amend the relevant reasons for the decisions in those reports? Yes, OK, so is everybody happy that uh, the enforcement proceeds? We've had it moved and seconded unless I hear any dissent in the next few seconds. We will take that as a unanimous vote. OK, thank you very much indeed. So another one in Cowbridge now, 2019 00274 full 48A Eastgate. Vicky, I believe, is going to lead us through this again. Thank you, Chair. I'll just bring up the uh, relevant plans and photographs for this just up the road. Sorry, bear with me. OK, so um, the plans in front of us show the uh, parking space and layout. As you'll see in the office report, this um, application relates to the retention of a change of use for a children's um, daycare nursery crash. Um, the existing use of the building, um, you, can, you can see from the photograph here, this is Bijou Nursery and Crash. So they've, they've already been operating for some time. Um, this application is to regularise that use photograph you can see at the back um, here is the location of the play area prior to the installation of a fence. Since then you can see the photograph here shows the fence enclosing the outdoor play space and the sort of parking, the three parking spaces um, serving the business. Um, similarly 
it did have high walls. You can see in the photograph here that have now been lowered to satisfy um, highway concerns about visibility for these parking spaces out onto the access road. Again, this is the before photograph. Apologies, this is not the best photograph, but it's just showing the lowering of the walls. Um, so if I can just refer to my planning at report, bear with me, sorry members, it's difficult. I'm only on one screen and it's difficult to uh, go through it. Are you, are you now looking at the officer's report or are you still looking at the photographs? No, officer's report. Oh, wonderful, there we go. Um, okay, so as you can see, this application is to convert from the existing um, A1 retail at the front of the shop. I'm going to go to the actual description development rather. Um, it, partial mixed use development. It was assembly and leisure, um, a D2 use, A3 food and drink, A1 retail and a D1 non-residential institution at first floor. Um, the application is to convert the entire thing retrospectively into a D1 use. We have had some concerns from neighbours, um, which I will get to that part of the report. Um, these largely re relate to, as set out in, in the report here, we had six letters of objection, so noise concerns from, from this um, use, uh, particularly obviously the, um, the use of this relatively small outdoor space. There is a condition proposed to restrict that. Um, highways and parking concerns, but the uh, Highway Authority um, are satisfied with the parking layout um, and, and, and things around the impact on the town and the, the nature of the uses there. The officer's report obviously goes through, goes through the main issues here. Um, having regard to its location in the town centre of, of Cowbridge and, um, you know, it's clearly a sustainable location, whilst it does involve the loss of an A1 retail use, that has been justified in terms of um, this this being a sort of active use that also brings people into the town centre and certainly a preferable uh, change of use from A1 than say a simple residential use which we often face pressure for um, in our town centres and similarly we have had um, other vacant units in the area um, go from A1 to other uses because they've been marketed and haven't been able to um, to retain the A1 use. So we're happy that the principle of the loss of the A1 is, is acceptable as set out in some detail in the report. Um, also having regard to the previous um, you know, uh, assembly and leisure use of the site, which would have had a certain degree of noise and disturbance internally, given the level, the relatively small scale of the um, children's uh, sort of play space outdoors and the um, restriction on the hours that that can be used. So I'm just referring to this paragraph at the bottom of page 113. Um, so we're suggesting in accordance with the recommendation from our SRS colleagues that um, that play space is sort of restricted to two hours a day during daytime um, hours, similar to the sort of um, noise outspell you'd expect from a school or that sort of thing that's that's often in a residential area. We don't think that is unreasonably un, un harmful to the amenity of neighbouring properties. Um, so yeah, with all that in mind, the officer's recommendation is for um, approval. Lovely, thank you very much. OK, um, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Yes, we do. Um, Councillor Johnson, please. Over to you, Ian. Thank you, Chair. Th thank you, Vicky. Um, just, for, just for quick clarification regarding the um, uh, the the number of uh, attendees that are likely for this site and the amount of additional traffic um, it's anticipated to generate within uh, within this area. I don't have those answers off the top of my head, I'm afraid. Um, I don't think that, you know, there's certainly no condition that would restrict um, the the number of children. Those things tend to be set out in the um, uh, the licensing arrangements for childcare uh, institutions. And I think it's, you know, it depends on number of staff per children. 
fair to say that it's already operating um, with those uses. Um, and in terms of the car parking requirements as set out in the report, the highways officers are satisfied with it. It's a sustainable location. You know, people would be able, both staff and parents dropping and collecting children would easily be able to walk from any number of locations in the, in the Cowbridge area. So it's it's very sustainably located in that regard. Um, if, if I can perhaps re rephrase it then in the nature, in the context of this being um, you know, retrospective, have there been any complaints um, relating to planning issues that have been recorded so far? And I'm just just trying to track the time scale on this as an application because a lot of the um, the uh, initial consultation and reconsultation seem to have taken place around about two years ago. Um, so I was just just trying to get a bit of clarification as to um, what pushed ahead at that point and what's been what's caused the delay. Is, is that just due to the pandemic or to other changes? Thanks. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head the precise reasons for the delay. Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't know these things. You know, sometimes it's waiting for consultee responses. Um, sometimes it's waiting for additional information from the applicant. I, I, I it's not, you know, it's not my case. I'm, <laughs> I'm only presenting the sort of overview of the report. So I don't know the, the intricacies of why it's taken this long to come through to pl planning committee. Um, it's fair to say there have been complaints and um, concerns raised from neighbouring properties and those are set out in the letters of objection that are set out in the report. So, um, you know, clearly there is some degree of concern that a use like this causes noise and disturbance, causes parking issues. I think there's some reference in the in the um, complaints to um, staff littering and things like that. So, you know, that the, the, there are quite often problems associated with commercial uses where they're very close to residential properties um that doesn't make it unacceptable in planning terms and those issues are not really relevant to to the planning considerations here particularly having regard to the existing use so when you're trying to think about you know what the impact on neighboring use is going to be like compared to what's already there having regard to the context and the town center location you know we've obviously come to the conclusion that we don't think those objections that have been raised are reasonable concerns to refuse the application on. The whole, um, what would it be, north side of the street uh, where this is um, happening, uh, not proposed because it is happening, is uh, one hour parking. So there is, you know, there's a reasonable amount of parking there and with one hour it does tend to turn over. So, and as you say, there's, you know, it, it's, it's Cowbridge, um, a lot of the, the children, I'm guessing, will walk with their parents to school and uh, or play school, whatever it is. But uh, anyway, Neil Thomas would like um, to ask some questions. Yeah, uh, just that I, I mean, I note from this from the report and everything that, that it was previously both retail and a chiropractor. So it was a multi it was a multi use building with a number of businesses in there and presumably the parking and uh, people turning up and using that would have been fairly high on a daily basis at all times, people parking nearby to, to use the use the shop, the retailer space, and obviously uh, uh, patients or customers for the, for the chiropractor. So uh, uh, is this going to be, uh, is parking actually going to be greatly different from that originally? I, I, I'd have thought not. And, and secondly, I want to propose, propose uh, uh, to move my officer's recommendations, please. Okay, thank you, Neil. Um, I think you probably right in that assumption um you know they're probably it's likely that there would have been more traffic um coming to and from than there are now it's only you know um, two maybe three times a day that there'll be drop-offs and pickups uh, and you know that it, it, it's not a big place it's not as if there's going to be 50 children in there it's probably you know going to be low numbers of children um it's a sustainable location. How could we turn it down? You know, it's previously had uh, mm -hmm. uh, these operations. I, I don't see it, but um, I'm happy to second this. Um, Neil has um, uh, proposed. Are we all happy? <coughs> Excuse me. Any dissenters? I will give you 10 or 15 seconds. No, no dissenters. So I'll take that as a unanimous decision then. OK. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that brings us on to where I have to leave you. Um, just to say, uh, Amy, if you want me to do anything, um, I, because I've got to sign out completely, I, I can't sit and listen. Um, just let me know on my um, WhatsApp. 
Um, thank you all for bearing with us. And I will see you all next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, committee, just to confirm the chairman has left the virtual meeting. Um, we do need to allocate a stand-in chairman for this last agenda item. Can I take nominations for chair, please? Can I? Oh, I'm afraid you're muted, Councillor Wilkinson. Oh, can I nominate Councillor Eddie Williams? Thank you. Can I have a seconder for that nomination, please? I'll second Neil. Thank you very much, Councillor Thomas. Do I have any further nominations before going to vote? OK, last call, no further nominations. OK, Councillor Eddie Williams has been nominated as chairman. Do I have any dissent for that place, please? OK, Councillor Williams is duly elected as chairman for the final agenda item. Over to you, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, uh, fellow councillors. Um, OK, we can see what the next report on the agenda. So um, as the usual practice, um, Vicky, would you like to present it to us? Thank you, Chair. I'm just having a look now to share my screen. Can you see that report? Yeah. OK, yes. um, thank you. So this last application then relates to the stables on St Andrews Road in St Andrews Major, which is the road that links Dennis Powys through to Wenvo. The application has been called into planning committee by Councillor Andrew Robertson due to concerns about the impacts on nearby neighbouring property at West Lodge on St Andrews Road. The application relates to agricultural land, so outside of any settlement boundary. Uh, 0.28 hectare parcel of land. I'll show you here on the plan. You can see the little dot and the application is for a new agricultural building and hard standing area um, next to the existing hard standing. Um, you can see the plans on the screen, hopefully, you know, relatively standard design for an agricultural building proposed to be used for um, housing cattle, the storage of hay, straw, feed and machinery and a hard standing area associated with it, 560 square metres. Um, you can see here from the plans. I will share my other plans, which hopefully members have already seen in any event. So this, can you see the, the site edged yeah. red? Am I sharing that good? Yeah, yeah. And so that's showing the application site and the access through to um, St Andrews Road, which is an existing access track serving the site. Um, and this clearly shows the proposed building and associated hard standing. And then these photographs give you a bit of a flavour of what the site looks like, the existing entrance in access into the site, relatively screened from um, St Andrew's Road being sort of set back. There are some existing buildings, as you can see, see there from that site. And if I'll come to it, I'm just bringing the aerial photo, which I know is here at the end of all these. We'll get there in a minute. There we go. Uh, so that just gives you a bit of context to the site and, um, you know, the nearby dwelling, which I think is this building here. We can just about make out in this uh, in this photograph as set out in the report there have been concerns raised by neighbors um who have raised various concerns about um you know the the building in the countryside and um uh, the impacts of that um obviously our conclusion in the report is that um, those matters are all considered to be acceptable in planning terms this is a countryside location where you expect agricultural developments to take place you know, it has been sited um, away from from the road and from the neighbouring property and the, and the scale of the development is, is rel relatively small in terms of the impacts. We think that's acceptable in this location um, and, you know, shouldn't harm or unreasonably harm the amenities of, of the nearby property. And therefore, the officer's recommendation is for approval. So I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll hand over to you. Thank you, uh, Becky. OK, um, 
members, have you? Oh, I've got the hand up from uh, Councillor Jessica. Would you like to speak? Yes, thanks, Chair. I was going to say Deputy Deputy Chair. Um, Vicky, the, um, uh, in, his, in his representation, Councillor Robinson mentions that um, there seems to be a, a 400 metre um, limit. Is that is that correct? With 400 metres, they can't be built within 400 metres of a house. How does, how does that pan out with um, it being just 65 metres away? That relates to permitted development rights. So mm -hmm. um, because it's housing cattle, um, I think that 400 metre um, relates to whether or not you can do something under agricultural permitted development rights. Um, so obviously this this wouldn't be permitted development. That doesn't mean it's unacceptable. That limit is not there to stop any development that's not permitted development. Um, you know, we deal with most most applications that we see at committee are here because they're not permitted development. So it doesn't make it unacceptable for that reason. What we have to consider is whether or not in that proximity to that dwelling is this type of development acceptable. Obviously, um, I think we would largely be thinking about noise and possibly smell implications for this type of development and, and the proximity. And I think having regards to the fact it's the other side of the road it is some distance away, it's set back from, from that property. Um, and we haven't had any objection from our, um, our relevant pollution control, noise control, SRS, um, consultees, you know, we have to have regard to that, that, that there's um, there's no unreasonable impact in those regards to, to those neighbouring properties. You know, they do live in the countryside, you expect to have developments like this in the countryside, it's where they should be located and the scale of this development is, is not particularly significant. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Councillor um, Edwards, would you like to speak? Uh, hi, thank you, Chair. Uh, can I ask Vicky, how much land has the applicant got? Is it just the two hectares or the 0.28 hectares around where he wants to put the building? Um, or has he got other land adjoining or somewhere else, which will justify putting a shed up? Again, I'm not sure I can tell you that off the top of my head. Um, I think the... I think the um, the farmer involved here has been moved from it from a different farmstead i believe off the five mile lane um i don't know if um if marcus can help me out here whether you knew any um any other information about that but um this op this application obviously relates to this land and this land holding as site as shown on the site edge red and i don't think there's um land edged blue here so i don't think he owns land immediately adjoining um uh, this, uh, sorry, this application site, but I think he has other whole other land elsewhere in the Vale of Morgan. Um, and my understanding was he was needing to move this building here because he had had an alternative building elsewhere that's been affected by the five mile lane. But I, I don't want to um, say categorically that's the issue, and it, it's not particularly relevant. Vicky, it's, it's in the report actually in the principle of development. Um, if you look at uh, page 126, it does refer to um, uh, the applicant having to move land from Five Mile Lane. So the application site has been registered as an agricultural holding following the business's relocation from Five Mile Lane. The agent has stated that the scale of the proposed building is directly linked to the business requirements in order to facilitate 13 Hereford suckler cows, heifers and calves. Um, so along with additional grazing and the site Sorry, my screen jumped then as I was talking. Um, uh, it's, on, on the, as a consequence of this is considered the building is reasonably necessary for the purposes of agriculture. So we have assessed it against what the requirements are and, and the reasons for the application. And it is considered to be um, uh, sufficient holding to accommodate what's, what is suggested here, which is um, uh, 13 Hereford Settler Cows, so it's a building to accommodate those. Thank you, Marcus. I knew I'd read that somewhere. It's just been a week since I've read the report, so apologies. I've been submerged in national development plans ever since. So. Okay, Stuart, would you like to come back on that or are you content? Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Chair. Is that is that um, a, a condition of the planning that it, it is going to be used as a, an agricultural building? Uh, as opposed to anything else after the applicant has built it. 
yeah that it's not conditional of the planning permission that's what they've applied for so any change of use or any other use would need planning permission so um you know we're only considering what's in front of us and and what the proposals are um and yeah like i say any change of use would require permission it doesn't need to be conditioned it's fair to say, Vicky, isn't it, that um, agriculture is considered almost in a use class of its own. So, for example, Vicky mentioned the um, permitted development rights, which are really extensive for agriculture. Um, but um, in uh, were this to be used for any other use, including, in fact, um, the sighting of horses or anything like that, there is that, that would require planning permission to turn this from a, uh, an agricultural building to a stable, for example, does require the uh, planning permission. Bizarrely, it doesn't require planning permission to put horses on land. That's not a change of use, but to use the building for that purpose would. So just to clarify, any other use at all other than for agriculture would require planning permission. OK, thank you. That's cleared it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Driscoll, you still got your hand up. Do you, you want to speak more? Sorry, sorry, Chair, I, um, no, I no take problem. it down now. Um, can I have somebody to move the recommendation, please? Hold yeah, uh, Councillor Wilkinson that. will move the recommendations. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any dissenters to this proposal? The recommendations. Only myself, Chair. I'll vote again. I'll be voting against it. Sorry. Can Can you just? Count, clarify? Yeah, Vince Driscoll just be voting against the recommendation. You're against the recommendation. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any abstentions? No, so we'll take it that that um, is taken as carried. Okay, um, that's the last item on the agenda. So um, unless there's anything else that uh, I need to deal with, um, Vicky, no? No, thanks, Chair. Okay, Amy, do I need to address anything else? No, no thank you, Chairman. Item. That concludes the agenda. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, everybody, for your time. And um, yeah, look forward to the next planning meeting. Thank you, all. Thank you very much. Thank all. I'll see you all. Thanks, Thanks Vicky. You've done a great Thank job today. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks. Thank you, Eddie. Yeah, thank you, Amy. That's great. That worked out really well, didn't it? So, good. Okay.